I don't know a lot about older Polish generation, but I'm sure they were refugees when they stayed after the war. We are going on a journey to meet the older Polish generation and learn about their stories. My name is Maciek, um, I'm 14 and I'm going to high school, Alejandro High School. Uh, I'm in year 10, so I'm just started my GCSE class. And uh, I'm interested now in uh, art, photography and uh, movie making. My name is Patryk, I have 16 years old. I'm going to Alejandro in Vrentry. Moja mama znalazła tę pracę i, jak to powiedzieć, przyjechałem do niej po prostu. Byłem okropnie przerażony, nie znałem języka. Co jeszcze? Nie znałem otoczenia. Gubiłem się. Nie mogłem się odnaleźć po prostu. My name is Karolina, I'm 24. Um, I came to England nearly four years ago with my boyfriend. Uh, we started as... Uh, working in a shop and then we went to college to do performing arts. We've done it for two years and now I went to university to do musical theatre. I'm 14, nearly 15 in four months. My, my, my dad got a job here and so we just decided to move to England. I don't know, uh, my feelings were really mixed and I, d I didn't actually feel much. Uh, I was a bit excited, but it's just hard to explain what I felt. So we, he was we, a wild boy. <laughs> I didn't so like of course, him. Of course we, because I was taller than you, him you, at that time. In no. church or in a chapel mass. I didn't like oh, him. We had choir, we had dancing group. We had football, and I got to play football, you know. So we had some different girls. Yes. <laughs> and somehow we got sort of together and love, fell in love. Fell in and love. we were married 53 and boys were married in that church from camp yeah. and buried in Brent in, in Brent cemetery. cemetery. My parents Everything Brent. Everything Brent. I kind of feel both, like British and Polish, because I've been here for a long time. And I've been, and I, li I lived in Poland for 10 years, right, well, 10 years, and I've been here, been in England for about four, yeah, over four years now. So yeah, I would say I'm um, half British and half, half Polish. I don't remember Poland because I was only six years old and uh, there was mom and dad 
and I was of three boys. And before I was born, uh, I was a two girls, and they, they died before I was born. I was the last one in the family. So when the war started, it was through of us, mom deported to Russia. And Without they, dad. Without that, that we didn't know. That, was probably, that disappeared. Well, we thought it would be, he was killed by uh, Russians or partisans, uh, Belarus partisans. Wird ein Landungskorps zum Angriff angesetzt. Im Nahkampf werden die einzelnen Stellungen genommen. know a lot about World War II, but as far as I know, I think Polish people were flying for the English army, that's what I know. But because it's a painful thing to think about the war, like in a war time, I don't really think about it and I haven't done a lot of research about it, because yeah, I don't like to think about painful stuff gas is dropped from planes either as a spray or in gas bombs. But should enemy raiders use gas against your community, there is no reason for fear or panic. Because if you know what to do, you can protect yourself and safeguard your family against the menace of gas from the air. I don't know, just people killing themselves and dying because of the stupid ideas. Like, I don't, I don't really get this. I don't, I don't think that ever should be any worse in a war. That heap of rubble in the background is all that is left of the frontier arch blown up by the enemy. in the morning at night, well, one o'clock at night, they came in, they took us <coughs> to the train, and off we went. We didn't know where we were going. Oh, yeah. As it happened, the journey lasted for about a month, and we finished up in uh, Pavodar. Pavodar, yeah, I know. It's Siberia, south, southern part of Siberia, actually. I came here from the Egypt because I went to the holiday to Lebanon and was in the Egypt, they won't let me go to Italy. And I came here, uh, was in the PRC, PRC, yes, yeah. and uh, I had enough of the army, enough of the superiors, enough of the officers, and I, I have enough of everything. So I went to, on the first chance to work, I went to the mining. I was mine over, over two years, uh, they gave me training, and uh, I was mine Well, all the, all the big road, you know, the, which took us to England. Well, he, they fought, they, they, they were in camps, you know, prison camps, you know. They took me out of my house. So, to be honest, you know, it's not, they wanted to come here so badly. <laughs> because I left my family in house there, and uh, and father fighting in in the forests because of the underground army we had as well against Russia. This is head office. This is Polish Social Cultural Association. They have uh, a post club. What I represent myself, the chairman. You know. Uh, last 12 years. Uh, and other things, we uh, have fiesta, theater, we have many different restaurants, we have a national library, many, many hundred thousand books. Library was established in 1942. 
is uh, uh, 2012 is uh, 70 years will be. This is quite old. See? That is the history of the Second World War. The books relating to Poland, English, in French, in because Polish people specialize about underground army. We have the best big army underground in all the globe. This is Armia Krajowa, AK, where my father fight in Battalion Kilinski in Warsaw. Underground publication is sending to England like that. It's official book. Russian troops rücken in the eroberte Stadt ein. Now I feeling now I can have two home, British home and Polish home, 50-50, precisely. I feeling uh, take me long, long time, many, many, many years. Now I know where is my home. That is good country where I am now in London. People look after me. I look after these people as well. I feel like Englishman. My name is actually Polish name. Family in Polish, I'm still feeling after a long time immigration. I have, I think I have two countries. Polish. You see, you never change bloody Poles. That's if you always, I am British subject, yes. But you see, in England, it's nationality, what nationality? Not the same with us. But you know, I, I've been very, very well treated, I must say, very well treated. England was a different country what we got now. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. You couldn't see any foreigner. You couldn't see the black face. You couldn't, you couldn't see any strangers here. First strangers we were. So to be honest, you know, British people didn't take it to us. So because we think we are heroes, we won the Monte Cassino, we won Bologna, all that. You know, we fought in in British uniform. It was British, part of the British army. We were doing the job for him. We expected a bit more. Czechoslovakia. I will fight. I will fight against like the Polish army. I was fighting only for Poland. Nobody going to tell me that is for England. I didn't fight for England. I will fight for Poland. Where you? I went to the prisoner camp because I was poor. I went to the frontier in the YouTube to France, no why? Because we were Poles. We was going to fight for Poland. And I don't care damn, you know, about anything, you know. I was Paul, I ever I die Paul. Mind you, the war was the best time for me. It was the best that I had. Look, we was paid, we was fed, we was uh, eat, we have a lovely country like Italy. What do you want more? They're materialists, you know the party. I don't know what I am, but it was lovely, believe me. <laughs> Today uh, I might uh, go out with my friends, Patrick and other ones. I don't know what we're gonna do. Uh, I think Patrick wants to go to London. That's gonna be really interesting. I think I like the most, the multiculturalism is there. That can meet a lot of different people which have their dif different, uh, in they are 
interesting in different things and uh, different stuff, but they still can talk together without any arguments and everything. I think I like that. And I like shopping over there because it's like you can find a lot of different stuff from different uh, uh, style of fashions and everything and you can mix together to look like just create your own way of look. English girls were not nice, not nice at all. No, they were not they friendly. To, not friendly. They used to sort of do uh, horrible things to the Polish girls, you know, and blame them for things and all that. But gradually, gradually, gradually things they, worked they out. Say. And of yeah. course, you see, when we went, you know, so that was different already, yeah, you see. Right there, yeah. We could fight with <laughs> the language. <laughs> and uh, they say, used to say, because, as I said, in my of place where we're going for four of us, four blogs. But if we start talking in Polish, they said, you're in England, speak English. <laughs> See? <laughs> of course, these days it's, it's not such a thing, is it? It's pretty no, distant, well, that's no. it. Największe wyzwanie mieszkańców tutaj, moim zdaniem, jest to po prostu nauka angielskiego i poznanie nowych ludzi. Znaczy złamanie typu stereotypu Polaka w stosunku do angielskich ludzi. Że, jaki stereotyp? Że nie przyjechali tutaj, kradną pracę Anglikom i tym podobne. And then they put us in a labor camps. And my brother joined the Polish Free Army in Siberia. Right. So uh, we, we, we thought we were going to die in Kazakhstan. Then we moved again to uh, Uzbekistan. I don't know how many months we've been there. Then there was a news that we can cross the uh, Russian border to Persia. And we traveled from Uzbekistan, the town called, capital town is Tashkent. From Tashkent we travel by train to to Krosnovodsk, which is on a Caspian Sea. And not only that, there was a th hundreds of thousands of people. Mm -hmm. In my case, there was mum and uh, six girls and one brother. And brother uh, joined the um, Polish army in Tehran, in the, um, the Pahlavi, yeah, Pahlavi, yes. But um, again, my sisters were ill and my, like Stan's mother, she went and tried to exchange certain things for milk and other food because what we used to have very rich food, the mutton, eggs, and all, there was all grease. And all yeah. that, and being in Russia almost two years. Yeah, you were like a skeleton. Yes, a skeleton. So the people were dying like flies. Yeah, special children. Yes. Well, I, we lost yeah. one sister in, in Russia as well from starvation and grandmother. Because when we were uprooted from Poland in 1940, the same time as Stan, uh, grandmother was at that time with us and she was taken as well. And my younger sister was only just a baby by mum's breast. But she survived. She's the one that is in Australia. And uh, she managed only one sister. She was a bit older than me. She died with grandma and they're buried mm. there. And again, a, a son who went to Tehran. Well, we went to Ahvaz first. And yeah, no, Tehran first. Tehran first. first. And well, we then, didn't know each other. No, no it was a thousand children. To, yeah, you know, yeah. it's amazing, yes, you know. And, uh, and uh, well, in, while in Russia, when we were moving, myself and my younger sister, we had dysentery as well. And uh, the um, authorities were going uh, through the train to get the sick children away because of, for, for the contamination or whatever. But um, somebody told mother that, you know, they're coming to our um, wagon. So mother took me and my younger sister, as she was a baby, and under the train to hide. Yeah. And of course she did hit, 
and when the train moved, she had a head split. Mm. But she, they pulled her in back into the train, and that's why we're here. Mm. I'm here, and my sister's in no. Australia. She, she saved us. You see? Yeah. And she said, if they are to die, they will die in my arms, not somewhere else. Women or wives, they had the first to go to England because, let's say, husband was in England. I was son, you know, my brother. So we were in a second sort of transport. Phase, yeah. Yeah, so phase. The, the, the wives were at first, and I was 1947. And I say, when we came to England, uh, in Sussex, we, um, uh, we uh, Southampton, then we were taken to New Brighton, a Polish uh, transit camp, Passingworth, it was called those. And then the fathers or brothers or sons, whatever, used to come and fetch the families wherever they had been stationed. And he came, and I remember I used to play <laughs> with my younger sister on the road, and there was this man walking with a, suit in a, with a suitcase, and he, st he came to us and he said uh, about my mother, you know, the name Buzinski, which was my, our name, where does she live, the family of Buzinski. And uh, I looked at him, because I was older than my sister, and I pointed out where they, where they were. And, uh, of course, he went there. And so when we finished playing, we went home, and yeah, I could hear a male voice, you know, <laughs> so in the, in the, so I lifted my younger sister up to the window <laughs> and she says, there is a man talking to mum. <laughs> of course, so that was our father recognize. and he didn't recognize nice. us and we didn't know him because we haven't seen him for six, six, six years, six years. Mm -hmm. So we came to Southampton, it was May, our were cold, cold. Mm -hmm. pajamas and sp <laughs> trousers and everybody, oh. I think a woman said, or somebody, oh, I think that I remember it's my brother or something, or my husband or something like that. I said, where is my brother, Kajit? Then he didn't come, he came two weeks later to, to fetch us. Well, he, well, he didn't he, fetch us. He, yeah. he married. Yeah, he was already Africa. married. Yeah, he married. Yeah. And what happened when he came to see us in Gloucestershire, I couldn't recognize him. And I, it's like a feeling as he was coming across at the side of a, a, a chapel. And I said, yeah, it's Kashik, he's my brother. Through the, only through the photos. And I jumped on him. And, I, and, uh, and he said to mom and me, said, you go where the people go, I can't take him. Because I'm already married and I live with in-laws. I'm go, and so I carry on being in a camp came to River Hall. And we were like a gypsies, going one place to the other. Without any, you like it or not, you had to go, had to do it. But in Brent, I mean, in River Camp, we started to believe, as I said, we're gonna settle here in England. We could go back to, to Poland, but Poland was communist and uh, there was no way we could live under communist regime. No. Uh, no. Sailing three weeks on a ship and coming to England and then going to those um, corrugated iron sort of hats and all that, it, it probably was very... Um, depressing and as a child you know living in India for five years it was warm although it wasn't didn't have any, all the comforts but here there was metal beds hard mattresses and then you couldn't speak the language and then we were pushed down to school and the, the English children weren't all that friendly <laughs> so there were always some, some misgivings.
I was telling the ladies there mm -hmm. that I do remember you as a little girl. Well, young girl, and I was a young girl as well. Nice to come to you for you, yes. And you. And as well. Lovely to see you Yes. I used to go, go to, to, to your um, dad, to your farm, to get some eggs or, That's or right. chicken, yes. And paraffin. Yes, paraffin, oh, yes, 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 paraffin, yes. <laughs> I don't know amazing, if you amazing, can amazing. remember yeah. an a airplane crashing up. Yes, yeah. yes, that's on site one, that was. Mm -hmm. Site two. Site two, yes, oh yes, yes. yes. <coughs> that was. We had a little piece. Looked after oh, Andrew. After Andrew. Yes. Yeah, oh, I, I, that's my niece and my sister oh, and my brother-in-law. Oh, wonderful. That's yeah. my oh, niece, wonderful. the one that lives at Mark's farm, my sister and my brother-in-law. Who's that? Uh, we, uh, uh, that's Krisha. Uh, Krisha. Yes. The pilot. Mm -hmm. we, uh, yeah. heard about the history of Polish people coming to England and it wasn't it wasn't that real you know many years ago uh, and that it was only stories but now I could actually meet people which are real so the history came to life and I think that was really really deep experience for me. I've learned a lot on the project because my knowledge about the war and what was going actually what was going on is pretty wide now because I had no idea that Polish pilots were were flying for England and that people were traveling a lot. Um, it was pretty amazing to discover uh, the Riven Hole in Braintree because I had no idea that Polish people were living there for so long. And um, hearing Anna's and Stan's story was pretty emotional because they've been through a lot and it was just amazing to, to know and discover that they've been traveling around the world and they met so many people and they actually, they just, they've been through a lot and it was good to know that after many of, you know, different situations you can still, you know, you can still find a place to live, even if you sometimes feel really homeless, especially during the war, when you leave your country.